Carol here. A warm welcome to my craft room. Well, I thought I would put up some card fronts. Actually, three cards, six card front ideas because I did the inside. I'm scoring my 140 pound card stock to make a two size cards. Now, uh, I do three cards three of the inside of the cards to give you some card front ideas using the LDRS Creative New Fall Collection. And as you can see to the left, we're going to use these juicy, and I'm talking juicy, uh, hybrid cube inks that came out. They are fantastic. I mean, I just couldn't believe how wonderful uh, wonderfully juicy they were to work with. <laughs> Did I mention they're really juicy? <laughs> Anywho, yes, I'm just getting and taking my Teflon bone folder, giving these a two size cards, four and a quarter by five and a half to all my new subscribers that are just starting. And I left this card, uh, this stamp set out when I was showing some of the collection. I mean, there's a lot more to this collection. So I will leave a link so you can check it out. But these are some sentiments that are just beautiful. And I found them. They were off to the side tucked under my vagabond. Can you believe it? So here we go. The ideas that I'm going to use here are card ideas. Like, uh, excuse me, the paper packs. I wanted to show you what it is uh, some ideas using paper. Let's get it down to that. <laughs> yes, spit it out, Carol, right? Yes. Uh, we forget, we get so used to just doing stamping and die cutting. I forget, I'm going to say I forget, to use um, the papers that we get, you know, that we collect. And they're so crazy adorable for the fall. So I took the A2 size card. And then I took the bright, bright autumn orange here. You could say it's really nice because I like the black and orange because it's Harley colors and we all know that I write a Harley. And so those colors are just awesome. So I decided, okay, let's use the ATG gun, put down um, the orange paper, get rid of all the sticky there, and let's start to create using uh, some of the products. Now one of them is this super thick 6x6 six six packs of paper. There, I have two of the packs. I have the plain colors, you know, just the nothing on them, and then the adorable uh, mice and bunny card uh, front that I'm going to use here. But I'm also going to show you something totally, I, I don't know, I've done this forever and I thought, you know what, I'm going to show you what you can do if you don't have the stamp set to match the actual papers that you have. You don't have to have matchy-matchy. You can create the matchy-matchy yourself. So let's start. Let's start with the ribbon here. I decided to do some different techniques on these A2 size cards. One is to match the ribbon. I use some seam binding. I always keep some white and beige around, the white particularly because you can color it with your inks. I didn't have any paper towels, <laughs> so I had to use one of my good, I mean, I could have gone downstairs, but oh, please, let's do that right. So I grabbed uh, from my upstairs bathroom, I grabbed a face cloth here, one of my uh, darker face cloths that wouldn't show the stains when I go to wash it. Anywho, I just went over it with the same color inks. Yes, I did get some uh, mess onto my white cardstock. When don't I write? I always, white cardstock and me don't agree. I always make some kind of a mess, but it just allows me to be more creative. I'm taking my reverse tweezers to hang on to my ribbon. I'm tying a cute little bow. And as you can see, I grabbed the cubes, these juicy, juicy cubes, went over the uh, ribbon, which is crinkly ribbon. Uh, it's the seam binding. And I'm making a bow of all the beautiful colors. The hybrid inks are wonderful for this. I just kind of squeeze them into my face cloth to get all of the juice out. Uh, took my blow dryer my heat tool, excuse me, and heat set it. And on the back with my ATG gun, I ran some uh, glue, like some tape runner, 
and so it would secure the ribbon on there. And now I am going to make another uh, piece of, well actually, I'm, this is foam. Carol, get your act together here. Yes, I don't know what that ding was. I guess it was my brain going into motion. But this is foam. Is it ever a close color to the cardstock? Wow, that's amazing. When I'm doing a voiceover and looking at it, you know, a few days after creating, um, yeah, I thought that was great. So I went around the edges. I didn't want to raise it an awful lot. So I'm using some of my Nouveau glue and I put the ribbon on, tied a bow. And on the back of the ribbon, I always use my ATG gun just to put some tape across to hold the back of the ribbon so it doesn't slide on the back. Put it on top of the foam. Isn't that cute? It's just a cute idea. Now I'm going into creative mode. Okay, what am I going to do now? I didn't want to stamp the images. This is where I got the idea for this video. There's the stamps. Yes, Carol, they match the paper. I'm going, wow, look at that. <laughs> like it's the first time. I realize the paper matches the actual stamps. Yes, I do need that ding to go off at times on my brain, don't I? Shake it up a little. So here we go. I'm looking at the stencils, trying to find what I am going to do here. And I thought, all right, I'm going to make six different card front ideas for you. Look at this die. I absolutely love it. And I'm going to, I thought I was going to put it on the inside of this, but I think I switched it up in mainstream. You know, uh, it was a week ago I did these cards. And um, so doing the edit, I'm trying to think, okay, Carol, uh, what did you do back there? And look at these beautiful sentiments. I'm just matching them up with the oval from the inside of that beautiful A2 die. And I decided to do it on vellum. So what I, I guess I stopped when I'm doing the edit and decided to put some tape on this, run it. You know how I am with uh, any cards fronts falling off. So I have to really tape it up, glue it up, whatever. And as you can see the Yupo paper off to the left, this did not get videotaped on one of the cards. And I'll share that with you later. It's just alcohol ink, whatever colors you want to do, pour it out on Yupo paper make the design you want and when I get to that portion I'll kind of explain my process after I get the tape off of the the uh, card here so um, let's see what I do oh yes after I finish this <laughs> it's like a new video to me uh, it's like me watching somebody else's tutorial um, so I put this down, I'm cutting it out. This is the Yupo paper and I picked out the alcohol inks. I daubed them on the Yupo paper, the same colors that were in the background. So I stuck with the orange, the yellows, the blue, the gray, the orange, if I didn't say that already, all different um, colors. And then with the blue, I decided to make bigger globs of the blue on top of the other color so that I could set images on them. See right there? So here's where my thought came out. I don't want to stamp these. I want to show you how, if you don't have matching stamps to your cardstock, cut the images out of the cardstock like this and color them. Take out your crayons or your Copics or whatever you have. You can darken it up, you can lighten it up, and here I'm just doing around the edges. And I'll tell you why I did it before I colored it. I did the edges in a dark gray color. And uh, it's probably a, a W10. And a, it could be, yeah, or a T9, one of the uh, darker grays. I go around the edges because I'm going to darken up the grays as shadows. So it didn't bother me to have this dark, dark edge around the outside. Normally, if I wasn't coloring the images, I would leave these ones white. Very seldom, probably 10% of the time, do I leave any of the edges white. But because the white cardstock is prominent on here, I would have left it white, but not here. My reasoning is because I'm going to darken up the images. Instead of making them light, I'm going to go darker than what the actual cardstock portrays in color. So um, here I'll go over all the images. I'll place them on there. One, two, three, four, five images, odd number, of course. 
and that makes it a little more pleasing to the eye. But as I started the design, I switched it up and I will show you what I decided to do later on. But the first things first, I'm going to color them with my Prisma pencils right here. So I am going to get situated and then we are going to color. Now, there's two ways you can do this. If you're using Copics, uh, the reason why I don't use Copics, let me say this, on smaller images, I don't use the Copics because the blending has such a small area to blend. But when you use really pointy pencils and you get to the blending, it seems like the image seems to be larger for some reason. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's because the ink in the Copic comes out, you know, when you're pressing it down a little more on the area than a pencil. You have more control on the pencil. I don't know. But when the images are tiny, I choose crayons. I choose to use a pointed pencil in coloring. So that's what I decide to do here. And I, I really don't, yeah. So oh, I'm cutting out some leaves out of the extra Yupo paper. When I cut this die out, I had some of the edges, and aren't they gorgeous? Yupo paper now has become my favorite for alcohol inks. Because I bought all those alcohol inks, I think I could think up a thousand ways to use Yupo and alcohol ink. I just fell in love with it. But for now, <laughs> let's pick one, right? So here we go. I'm going to start coloring. I'm going to go darker on the darks and stay light on the light um, features. And when I get done, I'm going to place them up there for you to see that it does look like a colored stamp. You know that you stamp this out, but sometimes we don't have all matching stamps to the papers that we have. So I thought this would be kind of a nice uh, inspirational video to show you. You can just cut out any images on your papers and color them just as though you had stamped them out. Now, um, I'm choosing a lot of colors along the edges because I put the dark gray marker. I'm going to darken it up. And I wanted to just say on here, if the features are light, you can change it any way you want. If they're dark, obviously you're going to have to go darker, right? And see where I didn't cut um, on the background there? I didn't want to get in there and risk, um, you know, slicing where I shouldn't have sliced and ruined the ap actual um, cut on the image, you know, the fussy cutting. And uh, so I just, uh, there I did yellow and, and then it hit me, no Carol, do blue because it'll look like the background, like it was a sky. And I did blue on the leg, not even thinking, good night Carol, that's the leg. <laughs> that little guy has to have a leg and it didn't hit me. You'll see me going around and just leaving it. I'm thinking, wow, what is that great big uh, spot there? But it's a leg. And then underneath the, like all the under parts, so the under part of the scarf or the under part of the legs, the under part of the ears, whatever's underneath will have a darker shadow. And so I'll go over that. Oh yeah, it just hit me, leg, leg, Carol. Yes, yeah, so I'm coloring it in. And I kept this in because I wanted you to see on the outer edges, like, okay, this little bunny has a scarf on. So you'll know when the sun comes down, you're not just going to have that line underneath the scarf. You're going to want to make kind of a T mark, like a angle, you know, uh, in a triangular look so that you can see that the sun did hit under the scarf, but it does go over and hit some of the other area to the left. And so I always think of that with things that are underneath the images. You know, houses underneath kind of go to the left-hand side and make this kind of triangle shape uh, when you darken it up as a shadow. It really does make it come alive. And here I need to pick the darker browns because I did do the dark gray around the edges. This was so much fun. It expands your creativity. And one other thing, Gamsol. If you have a small image and you don't want to use, you know, you're getting lost with using a lot of colors, take your Gamsol 
and move it around. Move the darker color to the light. And if you're on like a time limit, this will save you having to color all the light spots. Just move them with the Gamsol. And uh, it, it's pretty neat. And it really does give it this smooth look. If you're not going for an artistic, colorful look where you're using your um, medium and you want it to look precisely like all your strokes, you want your strokes to be consistent and you want to see them, don't use the Gamsol or whatever it is you, you, you like to use. Some people like uh, the um, baby oil. I don't like it because I don't like it if it gets on me. I don't like that slick, slick... Uh, the slickness, let's go with that, a baby oil, but I do love Gamsol. And um, yeah, so I decided to move the image. And when we get finished and you see the pictures at the end, really, you're going to want to grab a lot of your papers that you have just hanging around and cut out images. It doesn't have to be animals. It can be houses. It can be whatever. And if you don't, if you want to match them up with another piece of the identical cardstock, cut one piece all the images out and color them in, lift them up, and it will truly give it uh, the look of having a matching stamp set. And uh, here I'm just going around, just having a colorful day. I wanted the cheeks to be prominent. Uh, you know, these are small images. They're not large images. You're working on six by six paper pack. But for coloring and using Gamsol, because the paper's so thick, uh, you really get um, a nice surface to work on. And another thing, if it's slipping and sliding on your surface, say on the Tim Holtz glass mat, whatever, set your image on paper towel, like on a paper towel. Not The paper towel can't have um, patterns in it because it's going to give you a pattern on your actual paper if you press down. But it will help the image from moving. It's just an idea. Uh, I have paper towels that have no image on them, not even dots. They're just the they're just the real inexpensive dollar store paper towel. You know, my dollar store where nothing's a dollar, so it's probably a dollar fifty a pack. And uh, I keep one on hand for this purpose. If I want something to stay firm on the surface, I will put one of those on there. And uh, yeah, and that's another video in itself. You can get beautiful images on your paper by having a paper towel underneath when you color. I'll have to show that sometime because I have a few cards I've um, used that technique and it's really, really uh, pretty. Like it, it just has a feature all its own. So here I used a little bit of the dot kind of lines to look like a uh, uh, mouse and uh, it is really cutesy isn't it and you could cut fussy cut the little acorns out and um, you know put one on top of the other to give it a three-dimensional look whatever it is you want to do but I think it is a unique feature to color your cut out your fussy cut your cardstock color it in with whatever medium you are comfortable with and uh, yeah give it that look I think it's really cute. Now I'm going to move along. I had in another set of LDRS Creative, it had the little acorns, it had the little foliage, um, the bigger leaf, and so I took that out because with LDRS Creative, every set mingles with another set. It all comes together. So I wanted to kind of take away from the busyness of that paper. So I added some of the greens and uh, straight color die cuts. So I took some uh, tape and I'm going to tape down this gorgeous leaf stencil. Wow, so many things you can do with this. It's crazy. I could have went on and on, but I wanted to get this tutorial up. So I took some of my daubers, well-used daubers, and I'm going to jump in there for those of you that are new to card making. Just put soapy water in your sink, throw all your daubers in there, wash them up. They'll still have a stain on them, but they won't have that color. They'll come out nice and clean and you can reuse them and reuse them if you use a gentle detergent. So, um, yeah. So here I'm going with, I'm looking at the card stock at the top of this video and I'm matching the colors with these little uh, minis of the hybrid inks. 
hybrid inks move beautifully. It's almost like working with an alcohol ink on Upo, actually. And I'm going in and I'm adding to, it has um, the chestnuts there. Uh, it has the uh, browns, you know, with this release. It has just the colors that match the release papers in the little minis. How cool is that? So you don't have to be looking around. You have in the collection, you have everything you're going to need to work with that particular collection. So that's awesome. So I grab my daubers, easy peasy to go over it. Then I'm going to release it. And then I'll show you how you can use the actual stencil instead of cleaning it. Look at that. Oh, I'm going to put clear embossing powder over top of that. But for now, I'm doing an envelope. Oh, there's the clear embossing powder. There you go. And um, we're going to heat set that. But my idea here was to grab an envelope and just a baby wipe and go over it like you're cleaning it, like you're cleaning your stencil with a baby wipe. Then I'll go over some of the other images with the already used. Don't dip back into your uh, ink because it's super juicy and it'll be, you know, you'll waste it when you go to clean your daubers. But uh, you can see here, I just, this gives you a ghosting effect on the envelope. And I'll show you how I do the envelope there. I'm just darkening up some of them. And it's wonderful. You get your stencil all cleaned up and you get to have a nice envelope front on here. And so I'll put the same thing. I'm going to heat set both this envelope to get the shiny look on there. I love the background ghosting with the baby wipe, you know, cleaning off the stencil over top of the envelope. And here is the same images, but intentionally putting the ink colors on the stencil. And I think it's just beautiful. And that can be a card front in itself. So that's why I said six card fronts, one envelope. Now I'm going to cut, I opened up the envelope and I'm going to cut off the outside portion of it. It was really thin for my liking this envelope set. So I cut around it. I'm going to put the orange on there. And then I am going to, um, you know, put this in. Now the reason I do it this way, you can mail this, but I am going to put this in a gift. So I'm not, I know I'm not going to mail this in the mail. I knew intentionally this is going to somebody. I thought I put the black behind it, but it really stuck out too far. Um, there you go. Five inch Zyron comes out. I go over all the edges, flatten it out. Easy way of getting a solid stick on the front of this new envelope that I picked out. And uh, I measured it so it'll be almost exact. It really wasn't. It did have a little bit of an edge, but it is going into um, a gift. So uh, it, yeah, you can see, uh-oh, it went over the orange and I didn't want to redo it. So I had to come up with something um, creative here. <laughs> yeah. So I just went in, you know, just cut it off. That's what we do. We either cover it or cut it. That's my two, the C and C of card making. Cut it or cover it, either one. And in my mind, that's always always what I'm thinking, do I have to cover this or do I have to cut around it? And I chose to cut around it. I wanted to brush letter the name of the person that this is going to. So I took another die from another Aldera's Creative die set and I liked the edges. You know, it was just a pretty die that was in another set. Grab my Xyron 5 inch. I'm going to run um, this, you know, oh yes, this is the die cut that I showed you off to the side that I used on another piece of Yupo paper. And I, d I don't know what happened. I mustn't have turned my camcorder on for that. Yeah, that was really, you know, when you go to edit, there's a few disappointments at times. The corner came up. I didn't have enough um, Xyron. I didn't press down on the glue. So I just added some liquid glue. And there we have that on the front of the envelope. And now I'm going to work on the inside. Now in this die set, this is the oval that came out of the die cut of that beautiful release die that I used the Yupo paper. So I decided to use the little tree. I raised it up with the foam tape, the 3D foam tape. I raised the tree up. Then I put flat with liquid glue. I put the little uh, mouse 
with the leaves all underneath him and I matched it up on there. I matched the little tree on the green section of that oval, as you can see there. It's just the inside of the card, but I wanted to show you, you could make a card set using just little images on the front. And here's the Yupo paper. You can see I put some of the die cut leaves that I had from another set in a solid color using the solid um, uh, die set that I had from an LDRS Creative die and it worked out well for me. I really like that. So here is the die from the release set. It's so pretty on Yupo paper. I'm telling you, look at all the leaves all over. You have the center. You can cut it out or you can leave it. It has a separate die for the oval. So it's an either or type of thing. I'm just getting the glue off. I'm just rubbing my fingers over it. And then I'm going to start creating, like looking at all of this. Now this is the inside of a card. I'm pretty sure once I, I no, sorry, it's the outside. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yes, it's the outside. Let's zoom in here. Look at that Yupo paper. I'm always amazed with Yupo and alcohol ink. Something about it. And I decided for the inside oval to use the little fox, the pumpkin, and the acorn. Just a small little, small imagery in the oval to make a scene. And I stamped it up three times. The first time I used the little mini in the yellow. And because it's so crazy juicy, look at that. I mean, one time over it. It is crazy nice. Yeah right there, like I'm going so fast, like you're going to be able to read that. Then I just grab another uh, color and I go over it and I think it's the brown. Oh no, I'm going to heat set it. I always heat set hybrid inks, whether it's with clear or you could use the matching color of um, embossing powder, whatever it is you want to use. I'll heat set it because I'm going, because I'm going to color it. And uh, then I grab a darker color to go over it without even wiping it down. It kind of gave me this kind of uh, chestnut brown. It was nice. Then I restamped it, like right after. Boom, boom. And I have now three images of each individual image. Like I have the fox, I have three of the chestnuts, and I have three of the little pumpkins. And they're so cute to color because the pumpkins, you could almost color them like they were squash. I mean, whatever. So we're gonna go Copics. Even though it's a small image, if you're, you know, I thought, ah, I feel like coloring with some Copics, so that's what I did. And the fox, I went with the oranges. I tried to match everything up to the colors that were in the paper. And I'm just flicking it on. I wanted it to look like, you know, real fur, and you'll eventually see how I do that. I wasn't sure whether I should speed this portion up or leave it in like I'm, you know, going over it. I'm going to lighten it up. You can go light to dark, dark to light, whatever your preference. I don't think that it's whatever you're comfortable with. That's the philosophy I go with when I'm coloring. Whatever I'm comfortable with, that's what I do. You know, if I want to add the light first and then go over it with the dark, uh, you know, most times that is my thinking because that way, uh, if you go dark first, there's no lightening it up, you know, with, with Copics, unless you use blending solution and you're pushing it back, you risk going over the edge if you're not going to fussy cut, yada, yada. But uh, if you go light to dark, you can always darken up the light, right? <laughs> I hope that you can sort that out. It's just, you know, as I'm looking at it in uh, the speed here. And I also like to heat set with clear embossing powder sometimes when I color. You know, it keeps, um, I knew I was going to fussy cut these, but I was going to put a little white edge around them. I wasn't going to fussy cut right up to the image. I'm going to leave a little white edge. So I was careful how I did actually color this. And you know me, I color it, I go back, I color it, I go back, I flick it to get that look. Um, and if I'm not satisfied with it at the time, I'll stop. I'll move on to another image and start with that one. And you always want to put a little sweet spot where the sun would be. So I always decide, okay, where's that little, you know, sweet spot going to be? And I leave that. And, um, yeah, just keep on coloring. And I'll speed it up even more when I go on to the next images. Because basically, you're just switching up the colors, you know. And, uh... 
it's a nice feature because if you do three of them, you can plant these wherever you want on your card fronts because they're all from the same product line. They're all the fall line. So I can just change them up and place them wherever. So once we get all of the colors, choose a light, medium, and dark Copic to give you the shadows. I think pumpkins are really nice to color in because there's so, so much variation in colors, isn't there? And of course it matches the fox colors, which is so cute. And then on the fox, you can see it has the little lines for the closed eyes on the fox there. So I end up taking a Copic multi-liner and making a black line and then little eyelashes on each of the fox. You can see on the black fox there that it is uh, like that. And here's the colors that I picked out. I'm pretty sure I come up with them right there. Uh, just an easy peasy, you know, light to dark. And I kept this slow for you if you wanted to write those down. And then I'm going to move forward and stamp out the sentiment. And I'm going to fussy cut all of these animals. So I did the dark animals, the light animals. There you have it. Nice little white line around them. And uh, yeah, my little image is going to be on the oval part. So the leaf die on this set that matches this one time die cut that goes through the die cutting machine. And don't you love you, pull paper and alcohol ink? Look at all the colors you get. It just moves itself. They all match the colors in the collection. So I put some scotch tape on this because I kind of slid the fox in one of the leaves and then I'll put it down. And then you can go back. Like here I took my white uh, pen and this is the Signo Broad. And I'm just adding some highlight features. And then I'll add, you know, just three little images to make the center complete. And uh, I just love the little chestnut there and the pumpkin and the fox. I haven't put the fox eyes on there yet, but you'll see me do that. I'm going to raise up the uh, fox, I'm pretty sure, in the center there. Yes. And uh, I have to see. I'm so close there, but... It gives you an idea of the Yupo paper with alcohol inks, how they you don't have to do any coloring with the leaves in this. Isn't it pretty? Then you could add, uh, you know, one on top of the other. It would look beautiful too. Like if you did just one color underneath and then did a ghost effect with cardstock and then put the Yupo with the alcohol inks on top. Now I'm going back over to see. I darkened up the snout on the fox and I always go back at the end just to, oh I don't have that glued down so I'll work on what I do have down and that's the fox. I'll add some more shades here just by flicking some color. So easy peasy when you're dealing with small images like this and like I said you can't tell this is a stamped image from what I cut out and colored with the 6x6 paper pack. It's just a little bit of inspiration for you there to, uh, you know, to think about on your next card. And here I'm going back in with the signal and adding some highlights where I think, you know, I think it was the end of the tail there. I wanted to add something. I still need to add those eyes and the eyelashes. There we go. Doesn't that make it? And then I colored in the snout nose, the nose snout, whatever that is. <laughs> and the pumpkin and thank you so much everybody I really do appreciate your views um, I just this summer has just been hot and busy and uh, I love getting into my craft room we all know that and I have a beautiful uh, card tutorial I'm going to be working on a wedding card next and I think you'll really like that one um, I know I'm looking forward to it it's in gold and pinks and, uh, yeah, so I'll look forward to putting that up. Now, I took uh, some glitter pen, and I just did the inside of the oval, just so that that feature of the fox, pumpkin, and chestnut would stand out. And uh, I think it, it was exactly what I needed, because I left so much white cardstock, right? I'm not used to that, as we all know, but I, 
really do think the alcohol ink and the Yupo die cut with this beautiful leaf die cut one time through your die cutting machine. I stuck the black up. I was going to add a thin black line around the edges, but I chose not to. Can you believe it? I chose just to leave it white and to go with the look of this. Plus I have to, uh, well, I feel like I need a sentiment on there. So I'll work on that. I took some vellum. This is the 40 pound uh, Stampin' Up vellum. And I stamped, I'm trying to think here, one of my sentiments underneath this. Here we are. Beautiful fall sayings in this collection too, by the way. Just, yeah, rocking it a little bit. I think I had to do this twice because I think I rocked it one time too many there. And, uh, yeah, really pretty. And then I end up, um, well, I'll show you once we get going here. Kind of slowed this down for you for some reason. And it's, oh, I know what I did here. I stamped it in black and then I put gold embossing powder over the black um, ink. And I love the look of it. It just came out nice. So I put the stamp down in the black ink, uh, the hybrid ink, and then I put, uh, the name of that one is Raven. It's the little mini. They also come in the large inks. And isn't it pretty? It's not gold per se. It's, uh, it's just, uh, I like it. And it fits wonderfully in this oval. So that's nice. You can see I have some of the alcohol ink on my die there. I'll have to clean up. So I'll put that down, put it through my die cutting machine, and that's going right there. Um, yeah. So pretty. I didn't want to take away from the background. That's why, um, yeah. And it says autumn winds are blowing. I just think the sentiments on this set are beautiful. Oh, and then I went to the stash and I grabbed some of the dots. I wanted to have three dots matching the colors in the background. So I put that on in the gray. But then I went back with my Copics. Uh, that's something I always try to remember that if you have these little dots and they don't match your project, take your Copics and color them in. Color them in to match whatever it is your um, design is. And I'm going to show you that a little bit later, I think, that I wanted it to match the blue tone, that dark gray blue. So I kept the green as it is, but I uh, used that. Here I'm cutting down. Oh, yeah, that's better. Now we're going to do the inside of this card. Uh, because I was going with the fact that these could be card fronts, I did a little different design on the inside. So let's put down the paper. I'm just getting the glue all over my finger. Then I'll set it down on top of a paper towel, baby wipe. These cards are fantastically thick. They have this kind of sheen over them that you can use it. Uh, the baby wipe over it without taking up any of the paper and there's the Copic. I went with this deep blue gray and I went over the dot to match the blue. There was nothing in this that matched the blue in the alcohol ink. So now it does. Look at that. It's beauteous, Carol, if you get it in the frame. But see how it changed it up? It was just beautiful. I really liked it. Come on, Carol, take it out. I need to cut that out I get nope there we go so see the difference it makes and then I went back with this caramel color and then I went to another set creative basics whenever you see the word basics in LDRS they're Teflon coated dyes I want to stress that and uh, they work so well I wanted to have a fence because of the leaves and the country setting and the background with the pumpkins I thought a fence would be beautiful I took the clouds out of this set. I'll put everything down on my blog. And while I'm talking my blog, please forgive me for not having the items up on my last tutorial. I apologize. I need to go back and do that. I just had some uh, days where I, right after that, I went into some migraines there. and Did not get back to posting the items I used, but I will do that. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to express that. I didn't forget about it, but I will go back and post all of the things I use on my videos. I'm trying to keep up with that as well. 
So here we go, the fence. I wanted it to be dark brown and light brown. So I took my Copics and on this uh, 40 pound vellum of Stampin' Up, it works nicely. And then I'll just uh, go over all of the wood shapes here. Yeah, really quick. That's the beauty of uh, Copics, isn't it? Especially working on vellum. And I wanted to showcase the paper, first of all. So I'll put the fence and then I'll put the pumpkin, the chestnut, and the fox. I'm going to do a little scene on this. And then if you want to write anything, you can write it on the upper portion, of course. You know. And then I have the clouds, so that's pretty awesome. I'm putting some Nouveau glue on the vellum. It doesn't matter if you can see any of this. It really adds to the paper. I don't think you can see anything there. I'll just clean it up. And you have yourself a fence on this autumn background. So pretty. And then I die cut the vellum um, clouds. I like the idea of just a quick seed. It's a couple of clouds out of vellum. I put the glue underneath and it makes it kind of like a wet look. I really like that. Then I raised one of the poofy clouds up with double-sided tape. I die cut another cloud to go on top of that in white cardstock just to add to the white when you open it up. Then I put two of the vellum clouds on top of each other as far as the longer ones go. And this is just in preparation to put another set down um, with the fox the chestnut and the um, pumpkin. Yes, I'm going to put that on the lower half. So that's what I, I just kind of moved one of the vellum ones over. I raised one of them up. I like the look because the cardstock in the background is rather um, uh, not loud, but it's there's no space on there to really add anything else, I thought. So I thought by adding the clouds, it would break it up. And um, then the fence, I think I was going to put one of the white ones up there. I'm not sure if I, I think I do. I think I do add that later on because it looked kind of blank there. And then I'll get, uh, I'll go back with the Copic markers and I'll color in another fox and uh, go through the same, you know, manner. I like these. Uh, dies here not because not only because they're Teflon coated, but they have the dots around them Which is a nice feature then I go back to uh, bring out the fence You, you kind of you know got lost there a bit. So I just added some Copic coloring I grabbed some more of these leaves and I'll fit them in I like the way the leaves have this little opening edge in it So you there's a lot you can do with it so I added a few of those I'll quickly, and I'm talking quickly, color in the same elements that I have on the front. And uh, it's quite nice. Once you get your uh, markers, whatever you're going to use out, it's such a quick um, coloring process to cut them and fussy, or color them, cussy, <laughs> cussy butt them. That, that's pretty funny, cussy butt them, fussy cut them. Boy, that's dyslexic, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, so I'll put one on the fence. <laughs> I'm going to keep that in the fence. I'm going to put one on the fence, and I'm going to uh, cutty fuss it. Yes, and uh, then we'll have another element for a front of a card, if you would like to do this. And the A2 size cards, they're so cute to like to work with. Um, you know, when you're not used to it, it's kind of nice. And the reason why I left the white edge around it is because of the white cardstock when you open it up. You know I generally do all four sides of my cards. So leaving the um, white cardstock open like that, I thought having a white edge would be nice. Now I'm going to add a darker fox here. And uh, it's kind of nice, you know. Just coloring is such a relaxed feature of creating cards, isn't it? And uh, Copic coloring is no exception. You can see how I opened up the, the uh, flicked marks to make it look like it was actual fur. And uh, I'm adding the same colors, so there's nothing new in this. Then I'll go back once I fussy cut it, and I'll place them on the fence and on the background, and we will call it the inside of the card. 
And whether you do the inside or you don't, I think it's a nice feature. I was going to say it would be nice as a package, you know, to have six cards. Even if you don't put anything on the inside, just to open it up and have happy birthday or, you know, fall sentiment for the fall, whatever it is, it, it's a nice uh, change up to do smaller A2 size cards. So here I'm deciding where I'm going to put the little box and I decide to put the leaf under it I think. The same as I did on the um, outside. And see what it has those little ridges? It's so cute. You don't lose the coloring. You just place it inside the leaf and move forward. Um, I think it's a nice card front to have something like this. Uh, even for um, any occasion it's nice I think but fall especially. So there you have it. I'm just holding that down. I raised up the little um, acorn and uh, yeah, it's kind of cute, I think. It matches the front. It doesn't have a lot of elements, but all because it's a fall release, you have all of the same colors that you can incorporate. And whoa, of course, there he is. <laughs> Throw me right off. So I put a bit of glue on there. I'm adding a few leaves to break up the busyness of the background. And um, yeah, and I don't think it's that busy at all when you're thinking that it is a fall card, right? Then I'm going to move back. I took the three cards in the envelope and then I had leftover features. So I added them to the other cards. So there you have the front and it goes along with the back of the card. And, uh, yeah, so I have to put my stamp on there, created especially for you by Carol Held. And, um, yeah, I just kind of look at it and I'm thinking, okay, I want to use up a few of the elements. There's the envelope. That's the inside there. And then I'll move out. Let's move it over there, Carol. Yeah, I'm looking at it to see if there's anything else, but I don't think there is. I think if you put your sentiment on the top, you add the name to the front, you could mail that. I don't think you'd have any problems mailing it as long as it's stuck down well on the envelope. And here I'm going to add, I think I'm adding some leaves there. Oh no, that one little, yeah, I had that one little dot that I colored in with the Copic marker. I set it down there. Love the inside of this card. And this is my favorite for some reason, but I had some extra leaves. So I decided to put them on the inside of that card and to the back of a few cards. You might as well use up what you have there. So we have three cards, six card fronts if you count the inside. I need to cover that little bit of a Copic marker I got on the bottom of the white cardstock. So I trimmed off an orange piece. It's kind of like a polka dot piece. I made sure I got all the little polka dots in there and trimmed it off, covered up that mistake and uh, remember, it's cutter cover, and I decided to cover that up. Then I put my black stamp press on there. I added gold so I could get a gold feature on the back. There you have the one. I'm going to add more leaves to this one. Yeah, I needed to cover up that white cardstock. I don't know what it is. Call me crazy. But I do have to cover up the white cardstock. So what better look than to have all of those leaves, right? Then I'll stamp the back. I left it nice and plain. It comes out black. Then I'll put the gold. I'll heat set that. And we have our set, we have ourselves a set of little cards there. I added a leaf on either side of this. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I really appreciate your comments and I appreciate you stopping by. And the card winner of the last... Uh, for that die for the apple was Betty Hall. Hi Betty, um, your package is on the way and uh, there you have it. I'm just finishing up. I go back and look if there's any more coloring I need to do with the Copics and yeah, I needed to add some more leaves. I, I'm pretty sure that's what I do here. Yep, there you go. These leaves really come in handy and that Yupo paper is so quick with the alcohol inks right? You're getting all these beautiful fall colors. But at the same time, you could run your um, mini inks, the hybrid inks, right across a piece of paper in any order and die cut the leaves out and get the same effect, I'm sure. So here's the envelope 
and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I appreciate you stopping by as always. I have this uh, wedding card I want to work on next. Thank you to all my new subscribers. I do appreciate every one of my subscribers. I look forward to your comments and I hope you found some inspiration in this tutorial and I will certainly see you on the next one and you have yourselves a blessed week and I hope you're enjoying the weather and it's a nice fall season for you. Take care everybody. Bye now.